Aspen University, CJ120, Introduction to Law Enforcement. My name is Andre Rosedale. I'm the instructor for this course. This is Module 4, Discussion Question 2, which reads, Watch a movie or television series that depicts forensic science or profiling. How could the science be portrayed more realistically in order to dismantle the CSI effect? List the movie or show watched. So I look forward to your response, and instead of listing the movie or show watched, convert it into a proper APA formatted entry as it would appear on your reference page, please. So this, this is an interesting question because these CSI movies, um, and there's multiple ones, I don't particularly watch a lot of TV and I don't watch any of the CSI stuff because it's, it, I would just sit there and pick stuff out. And I'm not a forensic specialist. I never have been. Um, I could take fingerprints, but I can't translate them and I can't match them. Um, but there's a lot of interesting things that happen uh, in these TV shows that influence people improperly. For example, I was at uh, police recertification in southeastern Connecticut, um, and during one of the days of this week-long certification, the uh, prosecutors come in, and they talk about changes in laws and what they would like us to do better in our reports or in testifying, that kind of thing. They all, One of them mentioned that um, they lost an attempted murder charge that went to a jury trial because the suspect had attempted to kill somebody with a 380 handgun, which is, it's a smaller caliber. It is the lowest caliber that most police officers are allowed to carry off duty under the color of their department's policies and procedures. Um, but it's still a bullet and it's still deadly force. My time in the military, I spent in the infantry, and we carried the standard weapon for an infantryman is the, uh, we carried M16s, and then they became uh, M4s, I think, as I left. Um, but it's the AR-15 platform that you hear, hear about in the news. Those rounds are just a little bit bigger than a 22. Um, they are rifled. They do have more power behind them based on the powder in the, in the bullet, but it's a little bit bigger than a 22. Just about anything can kill you, whether it's a 50 caliber, a rocket launcher, a 223 that the Army carries, the Marines carry, a 22 that you use to shoot squirrels, rabbits, or targets, a BB gun can kill you if fired properly, a blow to the head can kill you. Um, but the prosecutors were upset because they had lost this attempted murder case because one of the jurors had convinced the other jurors that she had watched a CSI type program and she knew based on this television show that a 380 was too small of a caliber to kill someone. And therefore she convinced them that there was no attempted murder because that person was never attempting to murder this person because they didn't use a bigger caliber handgun. It's crazy stuff. You might think that's just complete bunk. But that's what we got. So that's what CSI type of things can do. They're kind of, or they, they have stuff like they have these computer screens that they that they are suspended in the air and they move around. They're like holograms or whatever. Never seen anything like that. I don't know anybody that has. They may be in production. They may be in testing, but they're not uh, commonly used anywhere. Um, or just the fact that they're able to solve crimes in an hour. There are a lot of crimes that take a long time for us to solve. In 2003, I was a police officer in a very small town. I had a burglary where I took a completely good handprint off of the window that was the suspect's. The suspect lived next door to the victim's house. The next day, I arrested the suspect for reckless driving through a cemetery, and he had weapons in the vehicle and drugs and stuff. So I brought him in, fingerprinted him, and then palm printed him onto like stationary paper. And I, you, if you looked at him, you were like, that's the exact same palm print. Even he said that, but he said he wasn't going to admit to anything. So the courts refused my warrant because he would admit to it based on them waiting for 
the one lab that the state of Connecticut has in Meriden, Connecticut to match the palm prints and get back to me. That was 2003. It is uh, 2021 when I'm filming this. I'm two days from retirement and uh, the forensic lab has not gotten back to me because it was a property crime only and it just wasn't really that important. Um, and that's just the reality of some of the CI, CSI and forensic stuff. So I would like to know from you if you've had any experiences with this and if so, what they were. And do you actually think that the CSI effect is seriously harming uh, police and um, efforts in the court systems to bring criminals to justice. I look forward to your thoughts.